Hey, I'm Sasha. Welcome to my channel. You're watching the Growing Together Let's Play, and we are in the Black Sheep era. Ah. This episode is gonna be spilling some tea and the whole meaning of Black Sheep. Please sit and enjoy this episode as you get into the tea. Angela says to Daniela, Don't look at me like that. Daniela is shocked. Can I meet him? And then Angela says, It's complicated. I don't want anyone to know. To be honest, between you and me, Angela is lying to her sister. But when she said boyfriend, she knew Daniela would back away a bit if she felt the situation was a little too messy. See, Daniela is a fixer. She will want to get a solution the minute she sets her mind on it. Angela convincingly says it's all new, so I really do want to talk more about it soon. Deep down, Angela wanted to tell Daniela, where were you all these years? From abandoning me when I was a teen, making me the oldest in this household, having to have all these responsibilities of being an oldest daughter, all of a sudden, you don't even call me like that after college, like, you know, and then now you want to be involved in my life. Daniela, please keep this between us though. I don't want anybody to be in my business like that. This is all delicate and in a very new situation for me and I'm still properly learning to navigate it. And Daniela tells her sister, of course, I won't say nothing. At the end of the day, Daniela wants what's best for her sister. Uh oh, I'm at the mother eavesdropping. <laughs> Anyways, child, long story short, Daniela promises that she is not going to repeat anything that was conversed in this room. And uh, Daniela updates her sister on her life in San Maishuno that she's been seeing someone and that, you know, this guy and her have a really interesting connection. And that, yes, it's her co-worker. I mean, you know, workaholic tendencies. And so, you know, Angela says, yeah, well, I met this guy and he has quite a story. I can't wait for, you know, one day for all of us to meet kind of thing. And I'm like, Angela, don't push your sis. <laughs> Because <laughs> Daniela's gonna want to meet him. Did you hear that? Daniela says no. Mom's standing out there like, should I knock again? Let me knock again. Who is it? Who's at the door? Daniela's like, Bryson, it better not be you. Or you, Charlie. Adults are talking. At least Angela was saved by the bell. She heard a knock on the door. It's mom asking to speak to Angela alone. So when mom comes in, she says she wants to confess something to Angela. I was at your aunt's wedding, and I saw you pregnant, and I ran away in fear. Angela asked, were you ashamed? And her mother says, yes. How did I not know my own daughter is expecting? How scared you must have been to go to your aunt above all people? And Angela says, don't talk about her like that mom okay your sister did an amazing job and she was there for me every step and i needed an escape and she welcomed me with open arms you always liked your aunt more than me i bet you wish she was your mom huh and angel says mom you made this sweet party for me and milag and now this is how you want to spend your time with me and her mom feels guilty she says i'm sorry i guess i'm just jealous you didn't come to me and angel says i'm sorry for not telling you and i'm just wondering how, what did you do after you found out so then her mother says i only told daniela and bryson about this information and your father of course and i talked to you know my mom aka her grandma and i was trying to tell her like was there a way for angela to come back home and grandma was like well i've been trying to push her and she's gonna come soon and obviously i just wanted you to know like we're there for you we love you so much angela and i don't want you to feel like you're alone in this process and i just wanted you to open up to us i didn't want to get too much information but i just wanted to know when you were able to come back home to us i hope you understand Let's go downstairs, Angela, and enjoy the rest of the evening. Mom, can you give me a few minutes? I just need a little bit to process everything. When Angela went downstairs, she saw her family gathered around, and this melted her heart. But it also reminded her of a time in the past. She was feeling very small, a lot like young Angela, who felt a little left out when there was family gatherings. 
When Angela was a little girl, her family used to stop by more often because they were living in the city before, you know, retirement and all of that. At a young age, Angela noticed, even where they sat her, that she wasn't considered the family's favorite because she would sit next to her auntie Brittany, who was like the black sheep of the family, her cousin Rosalie, you know, Uncle David, and like some other like family friends. But the first family chair was like for her parents and her grandparents, and of course, Daniela. Daniela was viewed as the star of the family from not only her parents adoring her so much, every relative, it was almost like they were like, how's Daniela doing? How's this? How's that? Oh yeah, hey Angela. Like it wasn't like that per se, but like you know how you perceive stuff, especially when you're a child. So Angela felt like she didn't have that same treatment her family gave Daniela. If Daniela was the star, Daniela was going to be the president. Daniela, oh my god, let me hear what you have to say. How was school? What do you have going on in your life? Daniela was viewed as the oldest, the first grandchild ever. When Bryson joined the family, he was viewed as the only boy in the family. And of course, Charlie was seen as the baby of the household. But what was Angela to them? To Angela, she felt like she had no specific uniqueness or a place in her family. She felt like an outcast like a black sheep and she would spend her days in the treehouse looking through that telescope like she did when she was with Norman. Funny how life repeats itself sometimes. When Angela was a teen, she needed a way to stick out. She tried to dye her hair pink, but she still felt like there was something more. Yes, painting, yes, pink hair. It did bring interesting conversations, but she needed something more. How to do makeup that makes you look unique. I need that. Hmm, this one looks unique. Yeah, that orange blush definitely helped. Hey, Thimble. Do you think my makeup is too much? Am I cute to you? Oh, I love you, Thimble. So, when Angela was a teen, it was viewed as this cute, quirky thing, but when she became a young adult, it was seen as a childish, weirdo girl, and she was heavily somewhat bullied and shamed for it. Not Angela's paternal grandma asking her grandson how to help her to fix her phone! <laughs> Well, finally grandma got to meet her. She lives in Brindleton Bay with her husband and that's her daughter by the way also Auntie China and she's pregnant with her third child like that was a shocker and then Angela didn't even know she had a second kid <laughs> But yeah, that's her father Auntie China's father and Mr. Adam's father uh, aka Angela's father and yeah at this point when I started to realize Malak was being fussy I was like okay we gotta get the night to get you know going so I was like okay let's put her in that playpen and let's have her go to sleep let's have everybody eat food and then after that let's have the family meet up outside the backyard area so they don't be too loud but yeah the family was being hella lovey-dovey I thought it was very funny to see them <laughs> All the couples slow dancing, like every single couple here had a kiss, slow dance. There's a lot of love in this room, I could be honest with y'all about that. Time for Angela to open up her gifts and everybody's sitting around, the attention is on her. And of course Bryson as he's walking in said, oh yeah that prank was from me, oh sorry sis. She's like, okay Bryson, let's go check for more. And like in my mind they bought like, you know, formulas, you know, stuff like that. Like think of it like a baby shower gift slash also like a home coming gift slash like you know what i'm saying housewarming gifts like all of that like wrapped into like a bunch of gifts that were probably randomly placed around the house okay <laughs> so yeah the family is just chatting with each other nico got to meet the family auntie brit got her man here and y'all was telling me that auntie brit is way older than mr has and it, you know what she probably is like five six years i mean they met on line so yeah but oh she really liked that gift okay angela i see you but yeah we're gonna have to end it all cousins hanging out with little charlie they're probably telling her don't be too hard on your big sister and she's like i'm not i just like thought that you know malak was like you know a science baby <laughs> the girls are like well love you sis love you and i thought that was so cute just all the family love back home Angela made Medak go to sleep. Angela was 
you know, very tired, but she's very happy to have her beautiful daughter in her life. She would not regret a single moment. However, that night she went into reminiscing, dreaming about the past, remembering her childhood, and she no longer wanted to be this black sheep era. She wanted to close that chapter and she wanted to open a new chapter, the reflection era. The next day, Angela gets a call from Auntie China, her paternal auntie, to come by and see the family. And Auntie China lives in San Sequoia. She took over her family's home after her family moved to Brindleton Bay for retirement. And she and her husband and, you know, now kids live in this beautiful home. I'm having a girl, Angela. Baby number three. She's like, oh my god, Auntie, you're, oh my god, you're really pregnant. Oh, we love you. And then auntie's like oh you're too cute i literally got pregnant back to back here is lacy she is your cousin and she's like oh hey little cousin she's like well this is her niece Malak. <laughs> and they were chatting it really made angela feel like oh my god like auntie china is giving me attention and time and you know they were never necessarily super close like that they don't have the best chemistry to be honest but they're trying and i think that's important you always try for your family and yes they have a bunch of ducks y'all know sansa is known for its little ducks <laughs> So that's her son Shannon playing with the ducks in the background, just hugging them. And the girls are both taking a nap. And you know, Auntie's like, you know, my husband and I, we're just okay, we're happy. This third pregnancy has been hard, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, three kids, it's not the same. Like with Lacey, and you know, I had years in between Lacey and Shannon, you know? That's her husband, Lucas Smallwood. And Auntie China changed her last name to Smallwood with him. Honestly, it's kind of tripping Angela being here because, you know, this is where her grandparents were living and now this is like China's place of residence. So obviously she's just getting used to that dynamic because while she was away to college, they moved away and retired. So it's just different for her. She's really noticing that time was moving. And obviously like Shanning who was very small and young and now he's like this big boy, you know? Angela keeps getting a call. So she excused herself from the table to answer this call. Hey, this is so weird, but I was thinking about you. Duncan says, oh really? Because I mean, that's why I'm calling you. <laughs> have you been? How's life? You know, I have dated you about that whole weird stuff with my sister. And I mean, I'm sorry that I said boyfriend. And you know, if any more information, you could just cooperate with me, right? Nah, don't worry about that, Angela. I'm actually calling you because I wanted to ask you to come with me to Bridleton Bay. I'm really nervous about going there and I just wanted to have a friend with me, somebody I trust and you know, I don't want to bother dad. So if it's okay, maybe you could come with me. And Angela says, yeah, sure, I got you, friend. Let's go to Bridleton Bay. When? He's like, tomorrow. She's like, really? She's like, are you serious, Duncan? He's like, yeah, I'm so sorry. I know it's so last minute. I was just wondering who to ask. And I've been overthinking this. And she's like, okay, you're lucky. I could work from home with this job. I'll go with you for a few days. Just as Angela was about to stand up, she heard a door knock. And it was her auntie, China. She said, I didn't mean to startle you. I heard the word Brindleton Bay and got so excited. Can we come with you? Oh my God, my husband hates going there. You know, he hates his mom and it's just, it's a whole thing. But if I could just use you as an excuse to visit mom and dad and just have a little bit like of an escape, he would so come with us. Angela felt backed in the corner. Like, Lord have mercy, this is gonna be awkward. Back home, Angela tried to finish up her night routine as quick as possible. Yes, I know, Balak did even change out of her outfit. She needed to pee. She needed to change her outfit quickly. She wanted to get her some fresh milk that was, you know, pumped. I know, a whole lot of stuff happens in this household. <laughs> As Angela was just carrying her child, she just fell asleep in her arms. So Angela's like, you know what, I'm just going to have to walk upstairs, put her in her bed, and go to sleep myself. I can't believe I have to go on this trip. This is spontaneous, but you know, spontaneous is not bad, right? Welcome to Brindleton Bay, y'all. Do you see how orange it is? It is autumn in this save now. Like, it's been a, over a year now since the whole you know lp started and now it's autumn and she's here in brindleton bay and my god the lighting is so perfect like i want to be here and grandma and grandpa yes this is their home 
and they are living you know the farm lake house type energy so let's go down and see what they're doing right now just wanted to tell y'all by the way auntie and uncle aren't here yet they're on their way they're taking the ferry angela just took the earliest one you know that uh, auntie china is pregnant she's like oh i can't go right now so they're gonna be coming a little later and it looks like angela and grandma are planting together in my mind oh not her whistling why she's so adorable she's trying to go check on Melak right now was trying to pick her up grandma's like oh my god that was so fun hanging out with my granddaughter like so yeah grandpa brendan has two kids with his wife china whose last name is now smallwood and he has his son who is adam hill and yeah his name is brendan hill and grandma's name is christy hill so this is their home by the way it's just so cute there is a security camera you know grandpa is a cop not anymore but he was a cop and his son is a cop he wanted his daughter to be a cop she ended up being one but yeah that's his story and grandma is a writer in my mind she is a naturally gifted so let me just tell you grandma's traits she loves outdoors a foodie family oriented she's naturally a gifted author and uh, vo for her singing she's a voice to remember so her husband is actually really talented when it comes to music it says pitch perfect so i feel like when he does a guitar she's probably singing you know <laughs> it just sounds like they would be the perfect cute little band for their local area like growing up or something you know and they probably fell in love like that but yeah this is pretty much their you know her traits let me tell you her husband's traits he's self-assured a genius and loyal he loves him some christy and christy is just the love of his life and that's never gonna change he is into exclusive romantic relationships only been with her never wants to look at anybody else he just lucked out that he found his perfect you know mate and yeah so he's a cop and obviously these traits are perfect for being a cop so yeah it's so funny but yeah he's a very strict parent in my mind he's quite insensitive so i feel like maybe growing up adam and china there was times he probably was like not sensitive to their emotions so let me just show you all the final family member who's like last but certainly never the least uh savannah she is a cat and <laughs> you know they wanted to adopt a cat now that they moved away they don't have little kids they still want to take care of someone you know but cats are slightly independent right so oh wow savannah is very spoiled talkative and friendly so i feel like she'll be nice to malak you know i'm a little worried but hopefully everything's good grandma was so distracted all day she didn't even realize it's nighttime she's so used to her own little routine and angela is tired she's just trying to hang out with malak at this hour and i feel so bad roll over to tummy milestone unlocked yeah she knows how to roll over already yeah so she's taking a nap while malak is just rolling around in the room <laughs> i am so weak but yeah grandma's making dinner it's a late dinner i just feel so bad um oh the family's here okay they're here finally y'all oh y'all made it to the city finally oh they're gonna be part of the stay over so that i don't control them but i do know where their rooms are so the parents are staying downstairs in the basement it's like a whole hotel setup grandma was like ready for her family to come by anytime not the dad here though but yeah they she set it up she was like yeah my family's gonna have a hotel experience when they're in town <laughs> like she's like nobody's going to no ho dang hotel it's the next morning shannon is talking to grandma christy it's so funny to me like he helps her with her phone i actually think they have a, like a friendship <laughs> Aww. it's so funny he's actually angela's cousin when you think about it, he's her first cousin you know just like rosalie you know oh <laughs> So he's gonna make a scrambled eggs with bacon for the family grandpa since grandma christy is hanging out with her grandson um make a friendship bracelet yeah let's have her make a friendship bracelet i can't control him so i can't make him do the friendship bracelet i would love if he can but maybe he could watch her make it you know i don't know why their animation is missing maybe it's because i used this object but she is making it oh grandpappy made the food he ain't calling no one call to me all Auntie China, what are you doing? Huh? What? Where's Malak going? What? Auntie China. What? Oh. <laughs> okay. What kind of trolling stuff she did? 
she's enjoying her breakfast she's trying to keep it light i'm not gonna have her finish her whole plate only because i don't want her to, but she might do it okay good i don't want her to finish her whole plate because i want her to eat at the restaurant that is like really talked about and stuff so i'm gonna go ahead and feed malak and she's gonna have to dress up and get ready to go so yeah feed malak the breast milk and then i'm gonna leave one out for grandma so the grandma could feed baby oh Oh, the love is real between them. Look at this. Slow dancing. What? Scold for eating human food. Oh, no oh, eating oh, human oh, food. Oh, That's yucky. Oh, That's yucky. Oh, <laughs> Not the cat saying, oh. Duncan invited Angela to the best seafood spot in Brindleton Bay. Duncan is feeling really nervous because i just literally loaded to the lot he's sitting waiting for angela and i noticed it's because his ex-in-law is here oh my god i know that he's supposed to be conquering his fear but damn not him having to witness them he being here <sighs> i'm sorry duncan angela finally made it to the restaurant though and i love that for her she's about to sit down i feel like she kind of dressed like a little overdressed she didn't know what the you know outfit she's supposed to be wearing she really thought you know it's like a nice bougie restaurant but this is kind of like that you know comfortable place that you go to you don't have to dress too much or anything i guess i'm gonna have to control duncan with the control any simmod i had to look at the in-laws like what's going on like i could not set this up you know i don't think they notice he's here yet so i'm gonna keep it hush hush the chef's choice is a soft shadow of a nalino. I don't know what that is, y'all. Let's have Angela get a Chardonnay. So let's try to see if they could do the whole experience, appetizer, la la la. Like, let's have him just hang out today. So the chef's choice today is a canapes with salmon and cream cheese. And I feel like he's gonna go and try to get that. And I feel like Angela is gonna be like, I want to, it's a little too new to me I'm, I'm gonna try something i'm not comfortable with but i still want to try it the tarlet red caviar and he's like oh that's a great choice actually i almost want to get that yes we'd like to order right now yes please make sure everything is perfect for us so i think he's gonna just tell her the truth that he saw his in-laws and that they're sitting right behind but he can't not ask if single oh I, you know he knows she's single like she literally even told him that i told my parents sorry i mean i told my sister that i'm dating someone as a lie like he knows everything he's just being messy let's just have him tell her the truth like bro that's my in-laws right next to me like that's wild oh she's shocked she's like oh he's like hey um my family my in-laws are here she was like what where are they and he's like just don't don't, don't look but they're right behind me are you serious, Duncan? Oh my god, they are here? Like, I know that you wanted to go here for personal reasons, but bumping into them, maybe this is a spot you used to go with them or something? He's like, yeah, but still, like, of all the days to come here, right? We gotta keep it low, we don't want to hear our voices. She's like, yeah, I don't think they noticed me. He's like, she's like, yeah, well, you look different. Your hair is different. And he's like, yeah, I know. I cut my hair. She's like, I liked when your hair was longer, though. Oh, not bird watching while you're sitting. I'm kind of have to stand. Like, why are you this chaotic, sir? I mean, they haven't been waiting that long, honestly. Oh, she's like, the food smells good. He's like, I told you. Appetizer's time now. Angela's really like hanging out with him. Oh, she's asking how's the food service. She gets good. Oh, oh. Oh, now I'm being paranoid because he sees them now. Oh, she spotted him. She's probably like, hun, did you see? And he's like, what did I see? Duncan, did you notice him? He's like, uh, yeah, no, he's not here. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. He wouldn't show his face around us again after he did that to our daughter. Yeah, the waiter is, they're very good service. Like, just keep checking. Let's order for the next meal. The soft shadow. It's because she's curious, like, why he liked it so much, you know? So let's have him have the Louisiana style Cajun seafood boil because, you know, it's gonna be really great. And oh, there's a vegetarian version. Oh, this is really cute. So I'm gonna have her have the cranky crawfish crab leg boil. Exquisite. All oh, the food got her feeling away. Oh, her breasts are ready to pump. If you don't know, he works in the tech field and he is a 
development captain. She's like, hey, I saw a foosball table. Do you want to play? Oh, you're, you're scared of losing. He's like, come on, let's just sit down and wait for the food. She's like, loser. <laughs> He's like, okay, 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 I'm going to play. Oh, she's feeling like she's losing. He's like, oh, I'm beating you. She's like, oh, oh my god, Duncan. Duncan won. She's like, I'm not letting you do that final goal. And he's like, oh, come on, Angela. <laughs> so she's like, oh, our food is here. <laughs> oh, Angela. Duncan tells Angela, I know the perfect place for you to paint in the city. Do you want me to take you there? She's like, really? He's like, yeah, I'd love to take you there. She's like, oh, when? He's like, well, I know that you've been away from your daughter. Do you want to go pick her up and we can go to that area? She's like, really? He's like, yeah, let's go. Let's go. She's like, oh, okay. Are you sure? Maybe we could go tomorrow instead. He's like, whatever you want, honestly. You know, she's like, the weather isn't that perfect for me to paint anyway. I kind of would love it to be a more sunny day. It's been a little gloomy. And he's like, yeah, yeah, don't worry. I got you. But do you want to eat desserts now then instead? And she's like, oh, sure. Let's go check the dessert menu out. Thank you so much. You're such a considerate friend. He's like, don't, don't even say that. I'm just doing the bare minimum any friend would do for each other. I think um, Angela is going to try the tarlet with raspberry and he's going to try the tarlet with blueberry. So again, 329. They eat. Y'all, they've been waiting for dessert for so long at this point. I just think that it's better just to end this meal. It was nice hanging out with you, Angela. It was nice hanging out with you, Duncan. Take care. Like, I'm sorry that we couldn't have the dessert. Can't believe we were out here waiting for hours. He's like, yeah. Yeah, 100%. She's like, okay, well, it was nice hanging out with you. He's like, it was nice hanging out with you, Angela. She's like, yeah, thank you. He's like, oh, once again, you look really great. This outfit is absolutely amazing. But if you want a more formal setting restaurant, I could take you there. She's like, really? Yeah, I'd love to go there. He's like, yeah, well, first we got to do the painting, then that. But yeah, you already saw the seafood culture here. She's like, yeah. So the ladies are just chatting, catching up. Angela is making sure that she can find some breast milk. I think she did for both sides. It's been a good week for her. Oh, and she's like, Grandma, thank you for the matching outfits. She's like, yeah, of course. He's like, I'm honestly, I would love it if you could come by every summer as long as I'm alive. I don't know if you know, but I have a fear of death, and I'm I'm scared that I miss out on your life. I think that's where my fear is stemming from, you know, seeing you all away and stuff. And she's like, Oh my God, Grandma, really? Like, I just feel like she's just like in this sentimental feeling, like, Whoa, you know, like I love you, Grandma. I want you to come to San Sequoia, please. She's like, Yeah, I know, but you know, this is where I get to chill. I don't want to always travel to San Sequoia. I want you guys here too. This is your home. <laughs> she okay. And you know, um, actually, uh, Grandma basically is like, you know, I don't know. I just feel so bad. Grandma Christie's uh, fear. What? Her husband has a fear too of death. But I think for him, it's just that he felt his whole life he was invincible because he's a cop and like, he was just a very strong man and he was able to like solve all these crimes. And now that he's older and frail, and I just think that he has that genuine fear like, I'm getting weak, you know? Oh. Whereas for her, it's missing yeah. out on family because she's a family oriented sim, you know? Do we? Aww. Maybe we can have the girls watch a movie. I know it's like very late, but again, it's a vacation time, and I think Grandma would cherish memories hanging out with Angela and her watching a movie, even if it's very late at night. So yeah. They're watching Diamonds Are for Sims. They're gonna enjoy this time. <laughs> It's the next morning and grandma wants to do the friendship bracelet with Shannon. I guess you do that as the animation. But yeah, grandma's feeling sick. She feeling like she smells and I'm a little concerned so I want her to take a shower. Today is a warm day in uh, Brindleton Bay. So today's plan is that Angela wants to paint outside and she wants to take Melak with her. If you notice, Melak's going to be wearing a sun hat just like Angela. They're going to be like, you know, doing the whole summer thing together, but not really because it's autumn. But still, like, you know that one day in autumn that reminds you of summer? It's like that for them today. So Angela is going to entertain her daughter because if you notice, Melak is sad and I want her to be happy because that's just not going to sit well in my spirit. 
have to make her Malak happy. Oh, the smile is here. Oh, Malak. Oh, bless. Oh. See, Angela couldn't leave her alone. She knew her daughter needed her. Oh. Oh, my heart. She's actually talking. Family is going to be playing symbols before Angela leaves. And this is a game the family loves to play together. You know what's so funny to me, by the way? Trina Simsay. You know what's so funny? They're wearing their own version of clothes. I feel like they probably went shopping together and he was like, listen, if you're going to get the girl something, I need to get Lucas something. Sadly, I don't think there's one like this for a kid. child sims, you know, for Shannon. But yeah, so Grandpa Brenning and Lucas are matching. <laughs> <laughs> it's too cute. Sorry, I love family gameplay. If you don't know, that's why I'm like so happy. By the way, I don't know if he has the neat trait, but Angela's trying to clean around and do the dishes, and she literally reset and he snatched the plates. <laughs> I never saw that in my life. Oh my god, that was so funny to me though. Play with me instead. I can't catch this fish that I keep seeing near me. Somebody give me the attention. <laughs> Duncan tells Angela, keep walking. Keep walking up there. He's holding Malak through the back carrier. Angela's holding her paint supplies. And she's like, where are we going? He's like, yep, we're going up that lighthouse. She's like, no, you're, you're kidding me. He's like, I am absolutely not. Angela's painting out here. And she has a view. Duncan showed her the lighthouse and that she could enjoy herself there. Oh, I guess he's gonna watch Angela paint. I think he finds that pretty interesting. I don't think he paints, his father does. So, you know, he does support his father and I think that's why he's very nice to Angela about the painting thing. Like, this is stuff he probably did with his dad, you know what I mean? Malak is having the time of her life, y'all. She is painting the forest. I think that's what she wanted to do first. So I don't know if she'll have time to be able to do another one, especially with the lighting and the time, you know? Angela's now painting another view that she just thought was really pretty. And, you know, she is really, very inspired with the painting. She loves the lighting that the lighthouse gives, like, it being that up high. She's very appreciative of being able to have this experience. I don't think she thought she was going to have an experience like that. Like, just like that, Duncan noticed a face. A face that was too familiar. He thought, maybe it's not. Maybe Bridleton Bay is still a big city and he wouldn't be able to see the sim while he's only here during his three to four day stay. Duncan noticed his ex was walking to the beach with someone. See, from his POV, he's not too entirely sure. Is it her? I don't think she notices that they're looking either. Oh, sorry, the lighthouse is lighthousing. <laughs> it's doing its thing. So now you get to meet Miss Winman, aka Duncan Hess's ex-wife, aka Bonnie Winman. Y'all are meeting Bonnie for the first time, and she's on a date with a guy, and his name is Xander. So she's just chilling with him, and she don't even know her ex is up there. Duncan says, Angela, we have to go right now. And Angela says, uh, oh, okay, one second, let me just pack my stuff. Angela's like, uh, is that, uh, why, why is your face like that up there? And why are you trying to leave so quickly? What's going on? It's like, oh, I don't want to just put you in it. Like, my God, I did not expect this trip to be like this. And she's like, what's going on? I don't understand. Like, did I do something wrong? While Angela asks Duncan questions, Miss Winman asks her date, have you ever woohooed in a lighthouse? And he says, no, I haven't. So I, I could take you up there if you're okay with that, of course. Xander says, sure, let's go. Uh-oh. Looks like he couldn't have the- oh! Yo, Dick just saw everything and I guess he probably thought it was just like a hangout. And now that she was kissing up all this guy, his ex moved on. Angela is like wait who are these sims what's going on why did we stop walking here you know she doesn't even know what's going on yet so moonman is probably gonna turn around and you know uh oh angela's like wait a minute i could sense what's going on here 
Oh my god. The way he's look stopped why he's looking at her like that. Is that is that why he was so moody before upstairs just suddenly left? That's his ex with another sim. Uh oh. She Hi, Duncan. I haven't seen you in a long time. Who's that sim behind you? And he was like, my girlfriend? And she was like, oh god, what popped up? As Duncan hugged his ex, he missed her. He missed affection. He missed being in a relationship. And I think that's why this pop-up came up. It's, it really brought him back. Oh, you're the girlfriend? Nice to meet you. What's your name? She's like, oh, I'm Angela. She's like, oh, nice to meet you, Angela. I'm Bonnie. Angela's like, oh, Lord, this is so awkward. But, like, she seems really nice. And then, of course, Xander's introducing himself to Duncan. Nice to meet you. My name is Xander. And, yeah, I didn't think I'd meet you in these circumstances. I mean, she doesn't really talk about her ex like that. I hope I don't offend you by that. He's like, no, no, don't worry. Don't worry. Nice to meet you. My name is Duncan. So Miss Winman asks Angela, where are you from, by the way? Like, where'd you and Duncan meet? She's like, oh, we, well, I'm from San Sequoia, but we met in Tartosa because his father married my aunt. She's like, oh, I did hear Nico got married. Oh, okay, so y'all are y'all met like that and dating. And she's like, yeah, we, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very interesting story to tell Sims, you know? And Angela, of course, she's freestyling. You know, obviously, she used Duncan as an excuse. And Duncan kind of knows. So I guess now he used her as an excuse. Like, what on earth is going to happen? And worst of all, right now, Bonnie asks, Hey, girl, do you want to go out um, and hang out with us? Uh, we're, we're, there's a restaurant nearby. We could have some food okay. together. Are you cool with that? Angela's like, oh wow, this is awkward. Like, I don't know how long I could play this couple thing with Duncan. Should I do this? This is the mother of his child. Like, obviously, like obviously, this is important for him. Should I? So you know, he's like, yeah, it's my treat, Xander. Let, let's go. She's like, okay, let's go. Let's let, let's do this. Duncan is shocked that Angela accepted the offer. He probably just wanted like a small high and run out, kind of like what he was planning. I know that he is conquering his fears though with this trip and indirectly Angela might be helping. Like obviously Angela kind of knows the gist of the trip, but she doesn't really know his full full personal story because they never really got into like it. You know, Angela talked more about her personal life and her personal struggles more than Duncan has. And Angela is kind of waiting for him to open up. And obviously, you know, the more she kept talking about herself, I don't know if I told y'all, she got a pop up that she is a little self absorbed. And now that we're in the reflection era, she gets to kind of like accept the positive and negatives about herself. And I can't wait to get into that, y'all. And I feel bad for Melak. She's just witnessing this mess. I don't even know if she's okay, child. Like, I gotta check on her. What is she doing? Doing. <laughs> she's so messy for an infant like her just smiling like yep this is my life adults are messy i don't know what they're saying but i'm happy to be here <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this episode. Don't forget to leave a like and please comment your thoughts because you know I love, love reading what y'all have to say. I always respond to every comment on my channel as much as I can. 99% rate. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this series again. I'm really so thankful for the support. Don't forget to leave sheep emojis and I'll see y'all for episode 7. And you know, if you're here at this video, I'm gonna tell y'all the truth. Episode 7, I read what I wrote and I am shook. I wish y'all a lovely, lovely, lovely day. Take care. Mm-hmm. I'm shook.